And welcome back to Walking Through the Word. Today we're going to be looking at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6 through 18. So if you have your Bibles, open them up with me as we walk through the Word together. As we enter now into the final words of 2 Thessalonians, I want us to keep in mind what Paul has already uh, written to the church in Thessalonica. In chapter 1, he reminds them of God's coming judgment against those that were persecuting them. And again, in chapter 2, he reminds them of the second coming of Jesus. This in correlation with his words in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and chapter 5, talking about the return of the king again. It can be very common for people who hear of such things, who are taught such things, to become anxious about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, to become overzealous of the second coming of Jesus. Now, don't misunderstand me. We must be zealous for his second coming. We should be anticipating. We should anxiously and excitedly wait for the second coming of Jesus, but not to the point where we become complacent, sluggish, or lazy. We should never stop putting our hands to the plow, not just for the kingdom, but also just in general. Christians should be working. They should be providing for themselves and for their families. Uh, they should be providing for their loved ones, for their wives and their children, for their, mo for their moms and dads if they need to, whoever it is that they are caring for. And the knowledge of of Christ's second coming, his imminent return, the promise of his return should not uh, persuade us or move us to somehow become idle in our work. We should always be working. And so I think what Paul is trying to do here is to encourage the church in Thessalonica um, that though they are enduring persecution and though they are awaiting the return of Jesus, their Savior, that they should continue working and not become lazy or idle. Uh, because we see even today, brothers and sisters become idle in their work. They sell all the, their possessions. Um, they sell their home. Um, they become foolish with their finances because they be, they. They learned so quickly about the second coming of Jesus and the imminency of the second coming of Jesus that he can return at any time, at any moment um, and and glorify us. And we should be anticipating the return, but not without work. We are to wait and we are to be patient in our waiting and we should long for the return of our king. But we wait while we work. We long while we put our hands to the plow. So Christian, as we are going through these scripture verses, as we read these verses, if you do not have a job and you're not toiling for the kingdom, you should take these verses to heart. Repent of your idleness. Repent of your laziness. Get a job, work and toil for the kingdom, provide for your family, and don't be lazy. So verse 6, now we, that's Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy again, coming to the church in Thessalonica, we command you, the church brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is huge. The same name. The same Lord, the same God, the same King that will come again for them to rescue them from persecution, that will glorify them, that will come at the sound of the trumpet and of the archangel and the cry of command. That same Lord Jesus, they are now commanding this, that you keep away, this is very important, keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness. This is huge. So if you have brothers or sisters in the church, if you have anyone, anyone who calls themselves brother, 
and they're walking in idleness, Paul's saying, keep away from that person. Don't fellowship with them. Don't um, spend time with them. Don't talk to them. Rebuke them. Tell them to get to work. And he tells them why. Keep away from anybody who was walking in idleness and not, not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. Okay, so Paul gave them and they received a specific tradition. Okay, this tradition that they received, as we'll see here in a little bit, is against idleness. We can make excuses for ourselves day and night. We can say, uh, it's just hard for me to find a job. I can't find. And listen, we, uh, we understand that as believers, there are those who will undergo financial turmoil. There are those who will um, look for work, look for employment, and won't be able to find any that might go through an economic difficulty or during an economic collapse or um, a time of economic stress and difficulty like we are experiencing right now with COVID-19. It's very common for people to lose employment and to lose their jobs. What's not okay is if you see a brother or sister who is never working, who makes excuses not to work, who's, he, who even claims to have difficulty with authority and therefore says, I cannot work. Anyone who claims they cannot work for any specific reason other than real medical reasons is a lazy brother. And Paul's saying, that brother, you need to keep away from that person. Keep away from that brother who was walking in idleness. Because someone who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that they received from Paul. We're going to see what that tradition is. Because we're going to see here that that tradition was work. Work with your own hands. Provide for yourself. So working was the tradition that Paul taught the Thessalonians. Paul saying, any brother, any brother who's not going to work, stay away from that person. He explains why here in verse 7. Verse 7, for you yourselves know, and he's going to explain what that tradition was that they received. You yourselves know how, what does he say here? How you ought to imitate us. I think this is what he means by the tradition that he gave them. This is the tradition. How they are to imitate them, us, Paul. Silvanus and Timothy. That's what he means by us here. He says, because we, that's Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, we were not idle when we were with you. So they were not idle. This is the tradition that they received that they should imitate Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. And that they were not idle. They were working. Okay. Nor, he says in verse 8, nor did we eat anyone's bread. This is huge. Okay. So not only were they working, but they didn't take anyone's food for free without paying for it. That's why they said without paying for it. So don't misunderstand Paul because it's very clear in 1 Corinthians and other portions of the scriptures that those who minister the gospel, those who minister and sow spiritual things should be uh, able to reap financial or material things from the church. But notice that someone who is actually toiling for the kingdom, not someone who just takes advantage of the sheep, but someone who legitimately, faithfully um, serves God's people ministers to God's people, cares for God's people, labors over the word, prays for God's people, counsels God's people, checks up on them, goes to visit them in the hospital, goes to visit them in the prisons, goes to visit wherever they are. That minister is ministering. That's their job. And so that's, they, and a, a worker, a minister is worthy of their, of their labor. 
they're worthy of the material things that they sow or that they receive from the church as they sow spiritual things and so we should as churches be willing to give to ministers um, a livable wage they should be willing and ready to receive that from the church that they minister to because they put time and effort and energy but notice here that this is actually very different paul was establishing in the thessalonians in the church in thessalonica paul was giving them a tradition okay and he was showing them something to imitate a pattern of behavior that is that they were not idle and that they didn't eat anyone's bread without paying for it they themselves wanted to establish that pattern of behavior amongst the thessalonians he says as in as he continues here in verse 8 but with toil and labor we worked night and day this is amazing night and day why why do they do this if they could reap material things as they sowed spiritual things if they were to be worthy of their labor why do they do this well he explains here that for this reason this is the reason why we do it that we might not be a burden to any of you that's why they did it they didn't want to take away from the work of the ministry. They didn't want to take away from people's livelihood. They wanted to have um, a tradition, uh, a method of behavior, a pattern of behavior to work and to toil and to labor among them as well so that they wouldn't be a burden. And listen, if a pastor among you is a bivocational pastor he's working full-time but also ministering to you while he's working honor that person respect that person they are giving up so much in their lives to care for your souls while they're still caring for their own well-being their own physical needs and their own families it's an amazing thing i have my dad is a pastor and he's been a bivocational pastor now for over 30 years his church has never grown to be a large church but there he is every week week in week out laboring over the word preaching the word caring for the people ministering to the people and listen pastors if you are at a church where you can receive a full salary please do not take advantage of that please be faithful to the wages you receive please be faithful to the people that you minister to as we continue here now in verse 9 he says it was not because notice it was not because we paul savinus and timothy did not have the that right so he explains it it's not that we couldn't take those things from you he says but to give you in our exam ourselves an example and i think this is what he means by the traditions that he sent with them uh, to to toil and to work to give you in ourselves an example to imitate so the imitation the example that he gave them was to work verse 10 for even when we were with you we would give you this command what command is it if anyone is not willing to work let him not eat that sounds harsh that sounds like well that's not caring we have so much we can we can give to people we can provide we can help provide that's listen those things are good and those things are necessary in the church but this is admonishing this is rebuking and correcting the person who is not willing to work if there is anyone in your congregation and you know them you know them they don't go to work they don't go to school they don't do anything maybe they receive unemployment or disability and they just live off of that and they become complacent they become um, idle 
They're not passionate. They're not zealous. They're constantly grumbling because they're not at work. They're only taking advantage of the situation. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. That's huge. Let him not eat. Don't provide food for that person. Because then you just become a crutch to that person. You just make that person more dependent upon you, the church. And if anything, they become more idle, more lazy. Because they think they can just not work and still be able to have their needs met and that is not okay and you brother or sister listening get a job get up and get to work verse 11 for he says for we hear and so in other words they recognize that this is going on among them we hear that some among you walk in idleness Not busy at work, but busy bodies. In other words, he's what he's trying to get at here is he's saying, look, the reason we worked among you and toiled among you is so that we could give you an example in ourselves to give you a tradition, something to imitate, and that is work. So that when we told you that if anyone doesn't work, let him not eat when we taught that to you when we commanded that from to you you would see that we are living it out and yet we hear he says here in verse 11 we hear that some among you walk in idleness and maybe it was because they were anticipating the return of the king maybe they thought or were hearing rumors of jesus coming back and getting ready to come back and paul saying listen those things are always true even for us today jesus can come back any minute but don't stop working work toil provide for yourselves and for your family work for the kingdom don't become busybodies in other words don't become people who are just always poking their nose into other people's business trying to get free handouts trying to get the latest scoop on things the latest news get a job any job in fact take the advice that my mother gave me when i was a idle teenager she said if you don't have a job then your job should be getting a job until you have a job. <laughs> That's such wisdom in those words. If you can't have a, if you don't have a job right now, brothers and sisters, fine. Especially you brothers, especially you men, fine. I get it. Economy's hard. Losing your job, losing hours, losing pensions, losing wages. I get it right now. But there's some of you right now that have not worked for years, have not even tried looking for work, have not even considered working at a minimum wage paying job because it's beneath you. And yet there you are in your idleness and you need to repent of that and you need to go find work and provide. Now, he says, such persons we command and incur. So it's an admonishment. We command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Don't let government, don't let disability, unless it's a severe disability, don't let um, Medi-Cal or Medicare or anything become a crutch to you. Earn your own living if you are an able-bodied person strong enough to walk strong enough to pick up groceries carry groceries push shopping carts if you're strong enough to stand at a, a grill and make burgers and that's the only kind of job that you can get right now you get to work earn your own living do your work 
quietly. In other words, don't complain about your job. Don't complain about your work. Be imitators of Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, how they worked among the church in Thessalonica. Look to your pastors. Are they faithful workers of the kingdom? Are they truly being faithful to the tithing that you're giving to the church? Are they working the hours they should be working? Are they putting the effort and the energy that they should be putting into um, the ministry for their earning and for their living? If not, call them out. Tell them, hey, get to work. What are you doing? Command and encourage them. Command them and encouragement. Hey, work for your living. Work for your ministry. Work. Don't stop working. Jesus will come back. That is true. But the question is, will he come back while you are idle? Or will he come back when you're working? I'd much rather that he come back while he find us toiling for the kingdom and working, um, caring for our families and providing for our families. And finally, to wrap up this chapter, this is what he says. As for you, brothers and sisters, do not grow weary in doing good. If anyone does not obey what we have said in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with him that he may be ashamed. Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. And this is, this is huge, guys. This is huge. We must recognize that when Paul is talking about the necessity of rebuking the brother and sister, he's not saying do so as though they're unbelievers. Tell them like a brother or sister. Tell them in gentleness, with love. Hey, get back to work. Let's go. Come on. Come work with us. Put your hands to the plow. And if anyone's not going to obey these words from Paul that were inspired by the Holy Spirit, take note of that person. You see that here? Take note of that person. In other words, point them out. Check out his attitude. Check out his heart or her heart. And have nothing to do with him or her. For what purpose? That he may be ashamed. That there would be heaping coals, burning coals heaped upon his head. Don't regard him as an enemy, but as a brother. And I'm going to add this next slide in, so that way we can finish off this scripture verse together. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. This is the sign of genuineness in every letter of mine. It is the way I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. It's incredible that we can journey together and walk through the word together experiencing the inerrant and infallible word of God, the Holy Spirit inspired word of God, and how we can dissect these words and learn from them even today, 2000 years later, be convicted by it, be admonished by it, rebuked by it, corrected by it, and taught by it, so that we could represent the Lord Jesus Christ well in our lives brothers and sisters as we anticipate the lord's return please don't stop working don't stop loving each other and don't stop anticipating his return look for him wait for him as you put your hand to the plow thank you so much for journeying with me through second thessalonians Make sure you leave a like, hit the subscribe button, share this video, 
share the, all the videos. Um, I would greatly appreciate that. If you're enjoying these Bible studies, please look forward to the next book as we enter into walking through the word. Perhaps first and second Peter, maybe Ephesians, maybe Colossians or Philippians, wherever the Lord wants to lead us. God bless you guys. Until next time.